How many have needs today? Anybody over there across the way have needs? Is anybody over there? I guess they got lost again. You know we all have needs. You know what is so neat is you get to pray for people. And you know, when God starts working and you start caring about people, you want the best for people. And there's so many people that have needs. So let's just ask Chapel Ordorno if you just pray for our needs. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, this morning that we serve a God who cares. God, you know all of the needs that are represented in this room and, and your desire is to touch your people, Father God. And, and we just come together, Lord God, and, and we pray for our brothers and for our sisters, Lord. We carry each other's burdens, God, and we believe, Lord, that this morning, God, that you would meet the needs of your people, Father God. If there's a need for healing, Father God, we ask, Lord God, that your healing touch would go across this place, Father God, and that you would move and touch your people. Lord, for, for emotional situations, God, we know that many are are struggling and sad with this time of the holidays, Lord God. But you are able, Lord God, to deliver us out of all of these things, Father God. For those who are struggling with addictions and, and all types of sin problems, Lord God. You are able to move, Lord God. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you are here in the midst. And in, 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 as we gather here, Lord God, you are here. Lord, you touch people, Lord. You bless people, Lord. You have a desire, Lord, to meet our needs, Father. So touch your people here this morning, Father God. And we will receive, Lord, what you have for us with a grateful heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bring in the cross. Hope you never get tired of this. You, know, you say, well, you do this all the time. We're going to continue to do it. Because you know what? When you see that cross, and those good people out there who see that cross, you still have an effect. We've been going to Scottsdale for a long, long time. And didn't think too much about it. We just keep on doing it. And Barbara can attest to this. Drew, the guy we've been working with, I had lunch with him the other day. God's really working in him. He's going to have to turn it a lot loose because he's got a lot of money, he's got a lot of power, he wants bars and everything else over there. But he's, he, I just prayed for him this morning. And I didn't think about this. Well, I was going by the other day, waiting for him, we're waiting, we, uh, bouncers, security, excuse me. Hey, tell Drew we're here. So she'll call Drew. And there's been a lady that works for him. And she came up to me and she gave me a big hug. She says, I want to give money to somebody. Who can that be? And I reached in my pocket and gave her a card. Because every week I go by, she's, she's looking. And I got to thinking, when the light keeps shining in the darkness, right. tell me that's not going to have an effect in the darkness. Amen. We're carrying crosses out there. We got our signs out there. We got the joy of the Lord is our strength. Tell me that's not happening. I can see it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to thinking. Yeah, God showed me a day. What, what kind of effect am I having through you out there? He's, I'm doing great things. You see, we might not know. We do what He's called us to do, no matter what the opposition is. We just continue to do it, just like carrying the crosses out there every week. I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time to get everybody to talk here. See, that's all. All you gotta do is see the cross. It's amazing to me. Somebody. Jesus didn't have wheels on his cross. What were they thinking about when they said that? Jesus in his cross. Amen. Was it great? It was absolutely awesome. Good? Yeah, wonderful. Fun? Yes, sir. I know you, you had fun out there, huh? Yeah, I want to encourage everybody. Hug the homeless. I hugged two ladies. One was clean, one was not so clean. Let's just hug them, you know. Hug them. Hug, hug them. Hug the homeless. The homeless, not each other. Oh, he's, you know, he's, 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 but not each other. It was good, a lot of praying. Holy Spirit led, lots of divine appointments. It was beautiful, out of love. It was wonderful. Pray for everybody? We did. It was the best time that I've ever had, Pastor Walt. It was. Let her talk. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. There was no drug that I could ingest taken with that is better than the Holy Ghost. rather be than, and to, than doing this. Praise God. I, just, you know, I just sold every, I thought I had surrendered it all to Jesus, but 
It's a wrap for me. He just got everything today. Oh, good. You go back? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hooked? Um, pretty much. <laughs> God's work, God's... She grabbed that date and stuck her tongue out. <laughs> God's work, God's timing, because we had a new driver. We went through a new route, so it was amazing, because those are the people we needed to meet today. Yeah. 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 We got a group of the mission guys. Oh, These guys are off the mission. Days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, he impressed me. He was bad here. It's fine. That's not. He's been disciplined. He goes to all the averages, especially the middle average. He's always on that bus, man. He's there. Many of us need that. To let God spank our butt, <laughs> rattle our cage, and see what we get. We'll see what we're made out of. Did you have a good time. Yes, sir. Thank you. How was it out there? Oh, great. I crossed my neighborhood. That told me I can't even cross. Oh, wow. Great guy. How long have you been in mission? Uh, seven days. Praise the Lord. Yeah. How'd you like that? Wonderful. Very blessed to be here. Long walk up here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> would you do it again? <laughs> yes, I would. Good bless you. Many more times. How are you? Thank you, sir. Sure. Great. It was awesome. So, how long have you been in mission? My second day. Too. Second day? Why were you um, carrying a cross? Did they make you? No, they didn't make you. <laughs> what about you? This is great. It's all no. great. <laughs> it's good. No, it's good. Give the Lord a good praise. Right? Yeah. You guys are in the mission. Yeah. I wonder if we knew any of them, how many would that? Be clean. <laughs> Anybody else? I don't have I don't have a thing to talk. This is amazing. Truly, God was showing me this. I really have trouble talking. You know, kind of like Sean, he's he, he's got problems. We all have our problems. I have trouble. I've always had trouble talking. There's something like a block in there. There's something up here. I always have trouble running too. And I was just thinking, does that stop me? No, all it does is, well, alright God, now, use it. I'm not going to be embarrassed about it. That's the way you made me. And you got all things working together for good, right? Amen. And you made me in your image for a purpose. And everything you made, you made good. You sit back and say, I made that good, that's good, right? So, think about that. Rather than get caught up in our, what we don't have or our abilities or anything else, why don't we just use the best we can of what we got? Because maybe that's what's going to cause other people. If that old clod can do it, gets tripped over his word and everything else, then maybe I can do it. Because it's not us anyway, it's God that does it. Amen? And so when he shows us, call us, we come here and simply yield to the program, which is part of God's plan. Amen? Then after a while, we graduate. Joseph, you did a great job today. Edward, Kurt, who said that? What guy do you know? What do you know about him? He's in a secret He's a preacher. <laughs> he, he found out a secret about him. <laughs> preacher. Is he paying you? <laughs> to shut up? That's like the, Praise the Lord. How was it? It was well, Pastor. You know, um, I'm graduating second phase, and uh, this six months I think was easier than ever six months. Okay. You know, for me, got me learning how to study on my own, a little, little more than you know, 
being forced. You know, it's funny you said when you get to know God, you see how more pathetic that you are. You know what I mean? I think Pastor Jerry, if he's in here, you know, for Chain Breaker Ministry, allowed me to go with him, do prison ministry, and they gave me a Bible verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, where are children of the light and of the day, not of the darkness and of the night. And when, 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 I, uh, when I was giving my testimony on that, I confessed that I was afraid of the light. But I didn't know why. But John, John 3, 17, 18 explains why I was afraid of the light. Because I didn't want my, my, my dirty deeds to be exposed. You know what I mean? I didn't want nobody to see who I really was. This image that I built up make you think, and I think who I am, but you really see who I am when the light is shown upon me. I was afraid of that guy, Pastor. I was afraid that everybody know he ain't who he think he is or who I perceive to be. I mean, so I thank God for the light today. I thank God for you, Mr. Wayne and you guys that, you know, tell us the truth. You know, that's all I need. I don't need to be sugar-coated. I don't need to be soft. I don't need, I want to accept it. You know, Pastor. <laughs> you know, quite honestly, I appreciate Pastor Adorno. I appreciate this congregation. I appreciate this family. You know, just telling us the truth. I don't need yeah. to, you know, I, I was a recovery for a long time. I have six years sober. And the best thing my sponsor ever did for me was telling the truth. You know, they don't care about my feelings. Besides, the Bible said we don't live by feeling, we don't live by faith. Yeah. To, 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 today I'm not afraid of the light. Today I'm afraid, I'm, I can walk in the light, I can walk in the goodness, I can walk in the truth. You know, even, even sometimes I still want to run back to darkness and hide. You know, but thank God, I'm not here. <laughs> you gave me the mic. <laughs> Amen. Is this good? good? Exciting? Yes. Fun? Yes. All the above? What are you, what are you going to do with this sticker? <laughs> you know, there's... Hey, is this thing fun? Yes. Man, I like it. Just tell me where it is. Now, don't lie to me. Now, let me turn me loose. It is fun. That's what you do now. Well, I'm I'm uh, do 2.5 on the job search. You know, I, I guess God ain't ready. You know, ain't done with me yet because all that I've been trying ain't been working. So, like I said, let let God be God. Yeah, yeah, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, sir. Fantastic, actually. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, like I always, you always ask people if it's fun when they get up here, <laughs> and uh, and I'm always like, oh, that's a crazy question. But it is fun. Like and today on the crosswalk is the first time I went, and I really did have fun. Like just, I got an opportunity to speak with two gentlemen, and I want to say this earlier when, you, when I was in the crosswalk, but there were two guys, uh, Eric and Tom, and uh, they were just like they were just homeless, and they were just hanging out on the streets, and they, you know they were drinking and stuff, and. And it was like such a, it was such a effortless thing. God gave me an opportunity to, to speak to them. And it was an experience I could relate to. I had been on the streets myself and like I was in the same situation drinking, nothing to do. And, and I was able to say, you know what? I was there too. But now God has given me something better to live for. And then I feel like it was really impactful. And like I know some of the other people that witnessed it feel the same way. Like that God just really orchestrated that whole thing. So it is fun, you know, and it's, it's crazy because it's like that was, it's my, I'm graduating today. So the first time I went on Crosswalk, it like took me this whole six months to like get an opportunity to feel like I'm having fun at church on the street. <laughs> and I want to pray, honestly, man, I went through, and I, I told some of my brothers about this, but I went through the uh, LA Dream Center, and it's a totally different program, and I want to praise Pastor Wall and like uh, Pastor Daniel, the leadership here, they've created an atmosphere that really allows you to grow. Like you're challenged. It's like, and sometimes you're like, this is crazy, like, people don't know what they're doing, but really God, he and he, he knows, like, God is in control, yeah, right, and right. that, and ultimately, if you trust God, and you go through this program, you'll, you'll grow so much, and it, like, his timing is perfect, so I just want to praise everyone, the leadership in this program, and thank God for them. I'm going to do second phase. I uh, just joined the spirit team. It's a lot of fun. I want to say hi to my mom. She's in North Carolina.
verses? How come? Uh, I didn't do my memory verses. And well, that's why. <laughs> All right, well, it's been great. I really liked it. At first six weeks, I was struggling. You know, and I can't say it's for everybody, but I needed it. I'm going to go ahead and go to phase two. Right. Get more out of it. Just supporting no matter what it was, there was support everywhere. And I, I really appreciate everything. And thank you very much. I'm not good at this. <laughs> Take the mic. <laughs> Is this better where you came from? Oh, absolutely. Where'd you come from if I get out? Uh, prison, five years. I came straight here from prison. Yeah. I need to get some more prison. Help me out a lot. Tell me grow, open my eyes and my heart to people. That's And help the needy, you know. I, I never realized how many people needed stuff and homeless people. And it's just, it's crazy. Really That's God. That's good preaching. He said he can't preach. Well, I'm sorry you didn't get a sticker. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to. Well, okay, we can't deal with you. Oh, no, man. That's good stuff. God. Thank you, sir. Appreciate everything. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. 
children of Israel, like us, go take possession of the land. They couldn't do it. They didn't want to do it. They could do it, but they didn't want to do it. Now, do you want to take possession of the promises of God in your own life? Come on now. I'm not talking about silly stuff. I'm talking about getting down to business. Do you want to serve God or do you not want to serve God? Amen. You serve God in His terms and there's no question. Amen. None. He's God. Duh. <laughs> really, think about what I'm saying. He's more, 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 more than more, 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 more than conquerors. We're more than overcomers through Christ, which strengthens us. Think about all that. So, we're going up in the next couple, of, next couple of weeks. We're going to take possession of the church and go. Then up here, I'm not going to ask you to sing. Not clear the church. You're not going to sing now, but you're bringing that down for you. What's your wife thinking about you singing? She, uh, she loves it. Can he sing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just amazing what God is doing. I mean, I, I, you know, the neat part about it, I guess, is that when you trust God, you're not responsible for the results. You're not responsible for how things work. You're not responsible for the rising. You're not responsible for the down. It's just so neat to trust God, and that's exactly what we're doing. I talked to Pastor Wall, and nothing we do makes sense, but it works. It works. It's like we talk about it. So it's just neat. It comes to me, he says, What does he say? He says it is working. As he's fighting against it. But you heard it. That's fine. He's new. He really is. Extremely talented. I mean, you know, he speaks five languages, interpret in in the court system. So he knows, you know, he's very, very sharp. But as a matter of fact, he'll come in and he's busted loose and, he, and he's, he's got ants in his pants. You know, he's, he got my grandma beat. <laughs> And, I'll say, and he'll say something, and I, I don't agree with him. He'll go back and think about it. He's willing to change. He's willing to bend. He's willing to grow. 
I've made so many mistakes along the way. I guess I've learned some mistakes. I've watched people, Pastor Barnett, and you know, all these many, many years, and I'm willing to bend. I am willing to bend. Are you willing to bend? Daniel is willing to bend. He's going to hold his own. Joe, are you willing to bend? Joe! He stand back. If he says he can bend, he has. Anybody can bend. I'm not going to put you on the spot, Joe. Well, it's just neat, and it's just nice to see how God is just cultivating the people. Joe has been an amazing, actually, help in our transitioning out there. And it's so neat because people, they sometimes, that we're up front, we get the glory. They don't see all of the parts that play in doing what we do. The people, Gilbert, Gilbert, Matthew, all of these people, every one of you guys are playing such a big part. You ladies coming down here, you don't realize, like, one of your guys' family put our alarm system together. Where is the... Otero, what's the what's her girl's she's name? Nursery. Oh, she's in a nursery. Her family came and put our alarm system up and everything. It's just so neat how God yeah. is working everything yeah. together. So just encourage, be encouraged and realize that every one of us play a part. If you trust God, there's nothing that you don't touch. Everything you touch will prosper when you're doing it in the name of the Lord. And don't ever, ever, ever belittle what God is doing in you. You may not be doing it in Gallup, but you're doing it here. You're doing it at the trailer park. You're doing it in front holding the signs. You're doing it in the security offices. You're doing it in Pastor Walt's secretary office. You're doing it everywhere in the education department. God is using you to build a nation. You let me do it? Yes. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> Is this thing fun? It is. I, I wouldn't be anywhere else. I love what I do here. I'd love to see all what God is doing. Now, but I want to ask you, wait, if this is the truth or not. Is he real? Oh my gosh, one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, he is a snake. God bless you. You know, it's fun, isn't it? Is it fun? You know, I'm, I'm just going to say this. His dear wife. She'll go to auto races. She's a big shot upstairs. She's probably next to Brian, number two, in this whole thing. Charged about. She's out in the auto races. She's out Mill Avenue, or Grand Avenue the other day. Stood out there the whole time twice. And I see some of these people that are out there for a while. And they sneak out, sneak around. They don't stay out there the full hour, but she did. But God can see you. That's fine. We're growing. Amen. Amen. Anyway, God's going to build His church. How many believe that? Amen. So we need to take possession. No, I'll probably, don't, probably never get through what I'm going to do here. But let's do this. Heavenly Father, just have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the children of Israel, they didn't take the land. They were supposed to. So what God do? He let them run around for 40 years. How many of us want to be running around Sneaking around, doing our drugs, whatever it is, for 40 years. <laughs> In and out, up and down like a yo-yo. And God loves us. That doesn't mean He's going to send us to the booger man's house. That means He's going to hold us accountable. You know what He did to them? He's okay for every, every day that you went up and checked out the land I told you to check out. And I said, go take the land. That was 40. He said, you're going to have to run around in the wilderness for 40 years. One, one year for each day. Think about that. I want you to think about what you're thinking. No. What your mind's telling you about. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. Okay, go ahead. Run around for 40 years. Run around for silliness. Doing your own thing is going to... Oh, Lord sakes. This, oh, Lord sakes. You can't see it. And then you're griping. They're griping because if God ain't doing this. We don't have water. Oh, let's, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go. In other words, let's go back to the crack house. Come on. What's the matter with us? Why don't we just let God be God? Amen. If we're going to serve Him, let it be God. He's going to work in us. Yes, He's going to prune. food. So I thought I can't talk. He's going to prune us. He's going to do whatever is necessary in our lives. But it's all for the good. Amen. Because He loves us. He's got all things working together for the good. To them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to His purpose. We're all called according to His purpose. Think about that. Oh, okay, so they go running around. And then finally, Moses ran out of gas and died. So Joshua 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise and go... 
to this Jordan, and you and all the people to the land which I have given to them, the children of Israel. Now, it's the same land, it's the same promise that he had for them, but they didn't do it. It's the same thing he's got for us. Are we going to listen? In every place the soil of your, your foot will tread, I will give you as I gave to Moses. Every place we go. That's what the Bible says. Amen. From the wilderness and from this Lebanon, as far as the great river, you praise and so forth, and the land, and on and on and on. He said he'd give it to us. Five. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Nothing's going to be able to stand against us. Nothing. That's what he's saying. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong, enemy, good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous. He keeps saying this. Be strong and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that I may prosper wherever you go. Whatever we do, he said, we're going to prosper. Right? The book of the law. The Bible. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. For you shall... I'm um, messed up now. <laughs> that you shall meditate day and night to, to observe to do according to all that's written there. And for then they will make thy prosper and then they will have good success. Right? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. He says you get up and go. That's what he's telling us, just like he told them. He says, I'm giving you every land you go. In fact, two or three times did he say, be of good courage. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. How many times has he got to tell us? He says things three times. He really means it, doesn't he? He's emphasizing that. Emphasize it. Yes, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you won't forget now. So whatever he says, he's going to do, he's going to do. So let's quit being silly and let's go do it, right? In Matthew 16, 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. I want you to plug your name into this. And I also say to you, as God talks to us, be strong and good courage. Be not dismayed. The Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. That's what he just goes. Have I not commanded you to be strong? What's he saying here? And I also say to you that you are, what's your name? Kurt? I heard Kurt. What about everybody else? Are you everybody listening? Now, my grandmother, I don't know. Come on, everybody do this. And I say to you that thou art, whatever your name is, plug that in there. You are wolf. And on this rock, meaning Jesus, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What are we going to do in Gallup? Be strong and good courage. Go over there. Possess the land. Take the land. Got a church going over there. Man, it's all working out. Just unbelievable. We got a discipleship program going. And you know what the Bible says? Go. That's a command, isn't it? Yes. Baptize. That's a command, isn't it? Disciple. That's a command. That's what we're doing here. That's what we had disciples come up and graduate today from the subject class. We got how many? Fourteen? Yeah. Up there. And man, it's flourishing. We're going to take the land. We ain't going to quit. When God, now there's going to be problems. There has been problems. Big time problems. Daniel the other day, man, he's ready to go. He's like Joe. This is this. We was coming back last time we came back from... Um, <coughs> what, what are we talking about? Gallup. Gallup, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I want you to really catch this. This is my mind. It's all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know, my wife said that. How does she know? It takes her to know what. That's that? <laughs> 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 
bridge, and now I forgot what I was thinking about. Gallup, 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 Gallup. Now what about Gallup? <laughs> Joe went out there to catch you. No, yeah. He's coming back, from, and we, and that crazy old bus, we, we turned it off, we couldn't get it started again. And I called Joe, asked him, you know, what brawl was it, and he told me what he thought it was. And waited a while, waited a while, and wouldn't start. So I called Joe, it's not going to start. He had already called to rent a van. He was going to jump in the van and go all the way up there and pick us up. About halfway between here and Gallup. Ready. Well, wait a little bit longer, pray a little bit, kick the bus, and <laughs> check the tires. <laughs> Got to jump and the thing started. And there's no problem. But see, Joe was ready. And the other day, Daniel, he's really had some big time decisions, struggles out there, looked like you know, big, big problems. He jumped in his car and he got a little ways, well, quite a ways from here. And he made a call and all of a sudden he realized he didn't have to go. The whole thing straightened out. Here's what we need to do. Get going. God said, get up and go. Only be strong and a good courage. Be willing to go and see what's going to happen. So, when he's talking about here, he says he's going to build his church. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail against it. We're going to have problems, struggles, battles. Devil don't want us to do nothing. Especially establish a church up there, which we're going to do. It's already done. We've got to, you know, switch over and pray that all the people don't leave the church. But I believe they won't because I believe we're doing it the way God wants us to do it. Amen. One day at a time. And that's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. And just our day. Every single day is do what we need to do to serve the Lord. Every day, one day at a time. And I'm going to tell you what, I've learned, I love the journey. Just enjoy the journey. Every day is a new day. Now, if you, if you enjoy Thanksgiving, Gator said he did. He put on a pound or two. And then, of course, this morning when he got the biscuits and gravy. No, really, catch this. No matter what the struggles and problems are, God's got it all working together for good. You can get the peace and joy. You know, to me, I'm no good unless there's problems. I don't like it that way, but I'm, I can just kick back, you know. But when there's problems, you got to do something. Amen. And so God knows. So He gives you a few problems. So we can take His kingdom, take the land. The devil ain't going to prevail. But he's going to fight. And if you just want to let, sit back and all poor me, we can't take the land and go ahead and run around your crazy life with, that, with the thing on top of your head for 40 years, groaning, biking, can't even say it, groaning, complaining, all that other kind of stuff. You go right ahead. Amen. Or you can just get right down and say, you know what, I'm going to go take the land because God told me to do this and I want to do that. How many years get down to business about doing this? Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go to First Corinthians. By the way, this is funny. I really, really have trouble studying to put together a sermon. The chaplain Lord owner, he was supposed to preach today, but because of going to Gallup this week, we switched. And I'm thinking all week what I'm going to preach, and I couldn't get nothing. This morning, I had a piece, I still didn't have nothing. And a lot of times, the will ask me who's preaching today. And I'll tell her, and I, when it's me, I'll say, can you help me, you know, do a little research for me this morning, just say a word. Didn't have any idea what I was going to share about. No. But God! See, this is what, I want to live it in front of people. I want to live it out. I don't want to try to, you know, some people can study and they're brilliant at it. But me, I can't. But, if I got it, i got to trust God with what i got and let Him use that. And that's where many of us need to be. Now, if He's called you to study and you're good at that, like chapter 1, Dorno and Louis, do it. That's fine. But let God use you for who you are. And don't back down, don't quit. Let's go take the land. Yeah. Even at the last minute. I'm sitting in my office this morning over here and still didn't know for sure. And all of a sudden, God got a hold of me. I knew He would. you got to go through that. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. 
But some of us, no, 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 I can't go through that. Oh, poo, why don't you just go through it? Okay, I don't have a whole lot of time. To... Man, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm beginning to really love this. Now, God told him, he said, I'm not going to take the lamb. You go, did all the world preach the gospel, okay? In uh, 1 Corinthians 1, I'm going to go real fast, 117, this is Paul talking. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should make no sense. So there's no effort against it. It's, the, it's, it's the, what God did on the cross. And he says, see, there again, Paul says, I, I, God didn't call me to baptize, he called me to preach. To get out there and preach the gospel, not say baptize, fine, Gator baptized last week, but he didn't remember, but he did. Amen. Now, how many did you baptize? He didn't remember. Uh, three. Sorry, baptize, okay. Five of us. Well, five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how many love this? Come on, come on. Praise the Lord, it's on the side. See, what he's saying is, not with the wisdom of words, at least the cross of Christ should be, no, be made of no effect. 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. See, we can't get saved without God putting desire in our heart. We can't get saved without the power of God. It's not a man or a woman just trying to go to church and play a little game here, you know, I'll learn this, I'll learn No, 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 no. It's the power of God that keeps us it calls us, whatever. And it's, it's the message of the cross. To some it's foolishness. If it's foolishness unto you, I mean, it's the power of God. It's this thing that'll slam you down. Like it did Paul. Slam him right down on his back. And maybe that's what we need to do. Get slammed down by the cross of Jesus Christ. And let him speak to us. And then decide what you want to do. What Paul do? He was persecuted. What did he say? What would you want me to do now, Lord? Who are you? And God told him what to do, and he went and did it. Slammed him! Now, you ain't going to stop. I don't care what you say, what you believe, you're not going to stop the power of God. What Jesus Christ did on that cross is the power of God. He's going to have His way. He's going to build His church. In the case of hell, they're not going to prevail against us. Think what I'm talking about. Okay. I will destroy this. 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing understanding of the prudent. The prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through, for, where am I at? Somebody read it. The world through wisdom cannot know God. If this God is a foolishness and a message, preach to save those who believe. Okay. For the, for the Jews requested a sign and the Greeks sought after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block. Is that a stumbling block to you? No. And to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called both Jew and Greeks. Is that us? Called? Yes, we're called. You've not chosen me. I chose you. He called us. He ordained us. Amen. Amen. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. That's what it's all about. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling. Brethren, not too many are wise or according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God chose the foolish, the foolish things of this world that can found the wise, a preacher that can't even talk. He gets all messed up. God has chosen a foolish thing, the foolish of whatever. <laughs> See, it's messed up up here. God has chosen the foolish thing of this world that can found, that can found the wise. No matter how smart you are, you can sit and argue. And it's the funniest thing. We go to Mill Avenue and there's, they're college students over there, you know, and they're smart. And they want to sit down and talk about it all. Well, they're talking to one of the foolish things in this world. And that's all I know. You can talk all you want. You can tell me all you want. And I'm going to just sit there and say, let me show you about the power of God now. What's happening in your life? 
You got joy, you got peace, you got the will to win, you got fights, you know where you can go when you die. You settle with the one that the creator that made you all. If you're not listening to the foolish things of this world, me, they got a brain in my head. But I'm going to tell you that Jesus loves you, he's got a plan for you. If you listen to him, he's going to set you free. Put that on your pipe and accept it, and you'll be okay. Amen. I got all messed up there. We just got to read this in old King James. 118. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But unto, to us that is saved, it's the power of God. Okay, I, I was going to get into something, but I have to change mine. You shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost Christ, you shall be witness unto me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other close parts of the earth. Amen? Amen? When you see that power, you see that, you see that power, you build yourself up. The whole Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Spirit. So what are we talking about? We're talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, the Spirit of God gave us the utterance. We shall be able to build ourselves up. We shall be able to have this power to be witnesses. And I can see more so every day. People are getting filled with the Holy Ghost, they're speaking with tongues. You can just sense and feel. One lady was telling me that she prayed in tongues last night and God gave her a vision. And she felt, she followed through with her vision. How many of you, see that's what we need. We need the power of God. The foolish things. He's going to find the foolish things in this world. They can found the wise. But you got the power of God, you ain't foolish. You might be, okay, on your own understanding you are, but not with the power of God. How many understand what I'm saying? How many want that today? Okay, how many of you speak in tongues? Stand up. You speak in tongues. Okay, we're growing. By the way, God, He commands us to do this. The assemblies committed together with them, commanded them. Not to depart from Jesus, but wait for the promise of the power. You know, a lot of times we have to wait too. But how long are we going to wait? If He says wait, wait. Some of us don't want to wait. But you start waiting. When it, when it comes to fruition, the, the timing is right, He's going to be there. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. So, now is the day. We're living in the hour. He's poured on His, he's poured on his Spirit all flesh like never before. It's the timing. How many of you want this baptism of the Holy Ghost? Stand up. We're going to have these guys pray for you. Okay, the guys that... Have it, sit down. Turn around and look. See the ones that, that don't have it that are standing up once you pray for them. <coughs> now you can do what you want. You can sit back and <laughs> God said, go take the land. He commands us to be filled. Now if you go sit there and do your own thing, that's fine. That's your choice. But you'll probably be running around the wilderness for who knows how long because of your choice. This is the power. This is what I'm talking about. When you feel like the oxygen is in this and you're stuck. Like me, I'm standing up here, don't know what I'm going to do half the time. Can't even talk right, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to battle my way through it, and that's what you need to do. This is what God wants each and every one of us to have, this power of God. Now you can sit back and analyze, scrutinize, whatever else you want to do. But if you're open to God, He'll put it in your heart. This is something He wants us to do. He empowers us. Okay, I want everybody, everybody's got, you're ready to pray with somebody, the people that got it, pray for somebody that doesn't have it. Amen? Okay. I want you to lay hands on when I say so, and I believe the power of God is going to rest upon them, and they're going to start speaking the heavenly language, the heavenly language that God's given them. Funny word. And by the way, it has nothing to do with you. It's God working in you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to earn it. He just wants to give you what He wants to give you when you accept it. He'll do the rest. Okay? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, when I when I say so, I want you to lay hands on me. And I, when, the, when people lay hands on you, I'm going to pray. And I believe the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you because this is God's plan for you. And you start speaking. you got to speak it out. It's not going to take hold of you. You speak it out. And God will give you the utterance. Okay? Pray for them. Heavenly Father, we just pray. According to your word, we lay hands on them. 
cloven tongues of fire came down and rested upon them. They all spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Give them the utterance, God. Give them this power. Give them this authority. That they have more than what they need, knowing. And you'll show them, God, that they're going to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you're going to build your church. And the gates of hell is not going to be against us. You've chosen us. You've called us. You are dating us now. You're filling us. And you're going to send us out. And we can build churches. Build discipleship programs. We can go preach baptize we can be able to do all that and I pray then Lord just fill them, fill them, this is your plan not our plan, we want to go along with you, you commanded us Lord God to accept this and then to go and we pray that fill them to overflow let them press on not back down and let this thing be manifest in them so they may be rooted and grounded in your power and authority be the witnesses that you called us all to be. As we receive this baptism, we're going to receive power to become what you want us to become. We pray that. God, just let that peace, that joy be in our hearts. And if God, people didn't get it today, I just pray they seek after it. And God, I pray as we leave this place, something will be stirred inside of us. And that's the Spirit of God. Let us go out of here, God, then with victory. Go take the land as you command. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. We'll have our services tonight. Bishop Booty's going to be here tonight. So shake hands. Tell everybody you love them and go get them.